and welcome to diabetic care india a few months back we had indeed come out with a couple of videos in english for the benefit of our non malayali subscribers and viewers but then unfortunately we couldn't take it forward because of paucity of time as well as resources recently however several subscribers and well wishers of us including some good friends of mine especially dr sham sha dr sha if you are watching this if you are hearing this please hi it's great to get feedback from such big names dr sha is a big name in the field of diabetology he belongs to as you would have guessed from uh, gujarat he belongs to gujarat and um, they have a lot of activities going on there with regard to diabetes and it was he who actually motivated me to come out with a channel in english so we might not have an independent channel i'm sorry about that in, uh, eventually we might but right now we are planning to produce a few videos of pretty much the same content that we have produced in malayalam so that it will benefit a far more number of people right all right so let's set the ball rolling so here is this 52 year old lady who came to me nearly a year back sometime in december 2018 with a history of 22 years of diabetes type 2 diabetes so she was diagnosed even before she hit 30 apparently she was scheduled for a thyroid surgery for goiter and that was the time when she was uh, detected with uh, diabetes type 2 diabetes and was put on uh, oral drugs and thyroxin 100 and apparently she was doing well for the first few years after that but then around 10 12 years following that her blood sugar control was lost and so since the last 10 years she's been on varying doses of insulin so much so that uh, the insulin dose kept getting uh, uh, increased and increased and when she landed up here she was on as much as 78 units of insulin per day along with a host of uh, medications oral medications still her blood sugars were far from getting controlled when she came to me her hba1c was around 11% and her blood sugar fasting blood sugar was 173 and postprandial was 250 and then i tweaked the uh, the dose of insulin and the medications a bit and because i wanted to get the uh, work up done the complete work up uh, diabetic work up done which had apparently not been done until then and she hadn't been subjected to any sort of ophthalmic uh, screening um, that's quite common isn't it Uh, we have many patients who are who are diabetics for decades but having never undergone any sort of of the examinations that was the same story here too so this lady then came back to me in january and uh, she was very erratic with the treatment she used to skip uh, insulin and her medication still her blood sugars were sort of getting controlled so when she turned up in jan it was uh, fasting was 112 and ppbs was 185 uh, definitely much better than what it used to be earlier but then she was having issues with her vision and um, since her blood sugars had started getting control like most of the patients do they don't take off they just disappear right once the blood sugars start getting controlled they feel okay so now i'm fine everything is going to be okay i don't need to bother much the same story here so uh, she just disappeared and then she reappeared in march 2019 so for two months she was away but when she came back things had become really very really bad had gone from bad to worse i would say so what used to be in the 100s uh, in the january had hit 300 and 400 when she came back to me in march and the hba1c had gone through the roof to 14.3 so from an initial hba1c level of 11 it had gone up to 14.3 now she was really panicky she was worried she was concerned a lot and uh, she was feeling very tired and she badly wanted to get something done about her vision which was failing 
and she was worried a lot because her mother had a history of diabetic kidney disease advanced diabetic kidney disease and this lady was also worried that she might end up uh, with kidney disease too so she was a lot concerned and then I had to um, change the entire course of treatment I put her on GLP-1 analogs I put her on other oral drugs and what I did was I didn't want her to continue with this sort of insulin 78 units per, ins uh, per day of insulin so I just cut it down to 30 units, 30 units of insulin per day, but added GLP-1 analogs and other medications. Now that proved to be extremely effective because when she came back later, her HbA1c had dropped from 14.3 in March to 7.8% in August. So just five months down the line, the HbA1c had almost gone down to half. That was absolutely amazing. And her blood sugars were settling down, but then there were some issues because she comes from a very far off place. So commuting becomes a problem. She wouldn't be able to come back for uh, regular follow-ups. She, she used to be a bit erratic with her appointments. But then overall, they used to keep in touch with me through WhatsApp and through phone calls and all that. So I was kept in the loop. Then she, after August 2000, uh, I'm sorry, after September, the September was, a, um, yeah, September it was, she hadn't come to visit me, she had sent me the reports through WhatsApp. Uh, the blood sugar control wasn't very satisfactory. I was a bit concerned about it, so I talked to her, I counseled her over the phone and I told her the importance of exercise and all those things. Apparently, she took them all in uh, a good perspective and when she came for her last review which was yesterday I was in for a very pleasant surprise it was absolutely satisfying and uh, very uh, uh, very um, relaxing for me to see her blood sugar levels and so were it for her yesterday's blood sugar levels please pay attention fasting blood sugar 109 postprandial blood sugar 133 three. absolutely fantastic all right she is on 30 units of insulin that is 16 in the morning and 14 at night pre-mixed insulins thyroxine then uh, she is also on sglt2 inhibitors a small dose of sulfonylureas and also a small dose of dpp4 inhibitors she is doing absolutely well. Now, the icing on the cake is the HbA1c. I need to share my delight with you with regard to the HbA1c. It was absolutely surprising. The HbA1c, which was 14.3 uh, in March 2019, had come down to an all-time low of 5.8 yesterday. I'm sorry, 5.9. That's close to six less than six percent that was the very first time in her life since she was diagnosed diabetic 22 years back this was the very first time in her life that her hba1c had gone down to single digit numbers they have always been about 10 and for the first time uh, it went down to single digit and more than that it went down to the non-diabetic range as of now she is in the non-diabetic range she was extremely happy and thanked me and my team profusely about this more than anything else i give the credit not just to her also to her family uh, we are on the threshold of the next world diabetes day which is on the 14th and the theme as you are all aware is diabetes and family the support of family when it comes to managing a diabetic can never never be overemphasized it's so important but we overlook it don't we we think we doctors are the ones who do everything <laughs> it's a joke <laughs> we doctors don't do anything at all it's the patient himself or herself as well as the family support that's going to make the big difference between the success of a treatment and its failure 
no matter what high tech equipment we use, no matter what state of the art medications we might use, no matter what other technology we might employ. Ultimately, if the patient is not empowered, if the family doesn't support the patient and the family is also not equally empowered, we aren't going to reach anywhere. Believe me, we are not going to reach anywhere. There's no point in just sitting in our air conditioned rooms and giving prescription after prescription to dozens or even hundreds of patients without making the family a part of the entire show. The family support is extremely important and that is what I would like to emphasize in this particular experience. This lady's experience and what I have seen over the last one year, one year just underscores, underlines this particular point. So let's involve our family members in managing our diabetics. Let's not treat them in isolation. It doesn't help at all. And to my diabetic patients who are watching this show, please, please make it a point to drag along a close family member, a close relative, if not at least a close friend when you meet your doctor the next time. It's extremely important. It's not a one man show. It's teamwork. Thank you so much.